Hey guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got another one from Ozzy and the great Randy Rhodes today. We're gonna learn how to do Suicide Solution. Uh, so this one is one of the easier ones for Randy at least. Uh, it doesn't have a solo in it. Um, the live version of it has his epic live you know, solo that he would do, um, which I've covered already um, on its own with its own video because it's worthy of that. So, but we're gonna go through all the riffs just on the original recording here for this. So pretty simple riffs, but as Randy usually does, he adds kind of different fills throughout each verse and stuff. So I'm gonna cover all those fills as well. So we're gonna go through each verse individually. Now, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel uh, if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you know there's a new video. You can like and comment on them watch the videos, it really helps the YouTube algorithm stuff. Um, and if you really wanna support what I do here on YouTube or anywhere online, click the link in the description below. It's a link to my online guitar academy. It's my online guitar school containing all of my courses from complete courses for beginners to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone, you name it. I do live streams every weekend with just academy members so they can ask me questions in real time and um, uh, get answers. And there's personalized support for me beyond that as well. So please, Click that link below and you get a free seven day trial. All right, let's jump into the lesson. I'm in standard tuning here. Um, and we're gonna start with just really this main riff, which is also the verse riff. Uh, like I said, he adds a lot of different fills throughout. So it's like this. All right, so I will preface this. I believe he's playing this on his Les Paul, which obviously doesn't have a whammy bar on it. I say that because I know he's playing his live solo, unaccompanied solo that he does on the Tribute album. He does it on a Les Paul, his Les Paul. So uh, now, and there's some dives going there. And he does that by grabbing the body of his guitar and bending the neck forward as he pushes the body back. He was very, very good at that. Um, I don't need to do that, I have a whammy bar. <laughs> and so I'm not gonna break my neck in half uh, to try to do that. So I'll be doing it with a bar, whatever he does that. But if you have a Les Paul, you can still do this because he's actually using a Les Paul without a bar and he just grabs it here and just pushes that neck forward. And for a tiny guy, it's not easy to do that. Uh, and he can really do it really well. So um, he can really um, get all those bar dives throughout the song. So he uses it throughout a lot. So just prefacing that, if you see me do it with the bar, you know, don't give me a hard time. I, I don't want to do it. <laughs> anyway, so let's start here with this. Um, it's kind of just slide down the starter. And then we kind of just start, it goes down to an A power chord. And we have that down, down, up. So that little down, down, up, just, uh, just on the open uh, A string, just palm muted. And then go up to the fifth fret here on the D and the G. And kind of slide that down. And then play the open D and G. So it's just the two middle strings. Then. And then back to the second fret on the DMG. So we have this. And then we're gonna hit the open A string twice again. Just a quick little down up on the muted A string. And that move again. So like this. So that's basically that little move done twice is the riff. And then the first ending is. He just basically grabs the third fret on the low E string and does a kind of a slow bend uh, on it. So just kind of pull it down. And then we start the riff over. And after two times of playing through that little lick, we he hits a like a pinch harmonic at the fifth fret there on the G string. And then kind of does that neck bar that <laughs> bends his guitar in half. Uh, but just a bar dive and let it come back up. So that's the intro and then the vocals come in. So it's basically the ripped on twice with those two fills. All right, and then we get verse number one. So. Really the difference in the verses, the riff that, that I'm doing here is the same as the intro, it's just each fill 
um, each time he plays a riff, he ends up with a different fill. So um, that's why we need to take them individually. So it looks like this. <laughs> So it starts with the same riff. And this first fill and the first verse. So that's going to hit the open D string and then hit it again and hammer on the first fret, pull back off the open. Then over to the third fret there on the A string. So. And then back to the riff again. And then we have the second fill. So that fill is now over to the G string, open G, hammer two, pull back off to the open. Same thing on the D. And then down to the third fret. And then when you get that third fret on the A, you can slowly bend that a little bit. And then back to the beginning of the riff. Now after the third time to the riff, the fill is pretty simple. Just take that A string and do one of those little bar dives on it. Or the, obviously the bend the guitar dive. Which is how he's actually doing it. And then play the riff again. And it's kind of just, I think the last, fourth time is not done as much, so it's a little bit. So basically the fourth time through that riff, you basically just do that little once, and then it goes into this. You still get the open A hit twice. And we do this, the power chord here, the seventh fret off the A string, then five, three, and then it goes to the G open power chord. So it's just basically the third fret there on the low E. You're gonna mute the A string with the bottom of that finger, and then the open D and open G. And those. Now, I'm adding the third fret on the B and the high E with it. You don't really hear those notes too much, though. It's more, you really hear the, the lower notes up to the G string. But I'm holding there just in case I hit them. All right, so that's all of verse one. And then the next riff, I just kind of call like a transition riff. We play through this riff and we go back to the verse again. So it looks like this. All right, so it just does that riff twice and goes back to the verse. So we had this. So it's a couple of kind of downstrokes, slow downstrokes you did on the open A string. And then hit the fifth fret across the D and the G string. Then to the open A again. Then back to the, the fifth fret double stops there. And then take it up to seven on the D and the G. I play it with two fingers. You can play it with one. I think it's easier to add vibrato on it. And then open D and G. So there's two middle strings open. And then you're going to hit the quick third fret on the low E string. Kind of quick little bend. And then into the A power chord. So like this. And then we have this little fill, which is a pinch harmonic at the second fret on the G string. Wherever you want to play it. And just hit the hit pinch harmonic. And then just do those little dives on it. And then back to the riff again. And here, it just kind of slides down the low E uh, for the second ending there. So it's just that riff done twice there. And then we get to verse two. Um, which once again has a little bit different fills than verse one, but it's kind of revolving around that same riff. So it looks like this. All right, 
So that first fill there was the same after you play the riff twice. It was the same as the first fill in the first verse. And then the second fill here is just a trill between uh, zero and two on the D string. All right, then we do play the riff once again. We get to the third ending, and here he jumps up real quick to the eighth fret on the B in the high E string. Plays those double stops right there, slides down to the, sec the seventh fret, and come back up there. And you gotta start the riff over again. So you gotta get that little right before you do that. And then the same ending. So all together for verse two. All right, then we get to the, I call this a pre, there's really no true, like, there, those are obviously verses, I guess. Um, but the little transition riff, I we'll just call it, because it kind of just transitions to something else, and it's kind of the short thing. This part coming up here, I call it an actual pre-chorus, even though it doesn't go to a chorus. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, sounds like it would be a pre-chorus. Well, it looks like this. All right, then it goes back to the uh, transition riff there. All right, so this one moves around quite a bit. We're gonna start with zero two on the A string. And then you're gonna hit the, uh, so that's palm mute. Anything, those notes, single notes on the A string, you're gonna palm mute pretty heavily. And then it goes up to fourth fret there on the D and the G. So wait this. Then you do the zero two again. But then the next, the chord on the D and the G is up at the sixth fret instead of the fourth fret. Enjoy this. And then you're going to jump back here and go 2 4 on the A string. So we have this. So that 2 4 on the A, you get to this uh, the seventh fret across the D and the G. And then he just holds that, then takes it down to the uh, sixth fret again. Enjoy this. So that's the first time through the riff, and then the second, and third, and fourth times obviously it changes up a little bit. The second time through it looks like this. So same riff leading up to those sevens. When it gets back down to the six, it just then keeps going down. Four across the D and the G, and then two across the D and the G. All right, and then the third time through the drift. So it basically does the same thing, seven to six up here. There's a slight, just cold, and then on the upbeat, catches that A, which is that bar across the two and uh, on the D and the G, or the whole. A power chord if you want. So, so far we have this. First ending. Second. Third. And then the fourth ending looks like this, the fourth time through. So that's the same riff going all the way up to the seven. Um, actually, after you do the two to four here, come up and hit a full D power chord. So that's fifth fret there on the A, seven on the D and the G. Hit that, and then, sorry. And then play four two on the A. And then the low E power chord. With a little bit of a bar dip there. And that would be the pre-chorus, which I call a pre-chorus, whatever. Then it goes back into that same transition riff. 
same fills even. All right, so it's the same exact thing. Then it takes us to verse three. Verse three, um, once again, a little bit different fills uh, than the first two. So let me play through verse three real quick. We'll see this. All right, so verse three, the first fill is kind of the same thing. Uh, the previous two verses started with the same fill. All the verses start with the same fill. So that's kind of common throughout all of them. And then the second one here is just the open G string. Well, one of those bar dives on it. And then back to the riff again. This third fill is just, just kind of sliding up the low E string, or, and then same ending. And then back to the same pre-chorus. But out of that pre-chorus, we're gonna get to what I think is the bridge of the song. So we basically, when we get to that, out of that second pre-chorus, we go to this A power chord. And you let that ring for four full measures, and there's a little, little pick slide at the very end, and that takes us into this. All right, so it goes back to that main riff, really the intro there. So, um, so those chords right there, pretty simple. Just a C power chord. Remember, after you've held the A for like four measures. A little pick scrape. And then to the C power chord there at the third fret of the A string. Hold that. Then the B power chord, the second fret. That same G power chord. We did earlier to the A power chord. So open A string, second fret of the D and the D. Hold that a little bit. And real quick on the upbeat before you hit, go back to that C to start the riff over, it's a quick open D and G string. And then you grab the C again, but this time the riff is slightly different. It moves along a little quicker. C to D to that G power chord. So that C up two frets and D power chord, then G, A. All right, now there's a little pickup again, but it's a little bit different than the first one to start over. It's two on the D and the G to four on the D and the G. With a little pickup. Then we're back to repeating the riff again. This time back to this C, B, G, A. And this time the pickup is just the fours on the D and the G. But once again, the second half of this riff, C to D, G. And as soon as you get to that A, instead of just hitting the A power chord, it goes back into that main riff. It basically, right here, it basically plays the intro, which is that riff played twice, but it ends it with a, that, that fifth fret we did earlier, well, pinch harmonic. It's actually a natural harmonic this time, so it looks like this. So it's basically the same thing we did in the intro, except that uh, that pinch harmonic at the fifth fret, just the actual natural harmonic this time. And then do the little bar dive on it. All right, uh, from there we get to verse number four. This verse, last verse is uh, like twice as long. Um, 
And then it gets to that ending section. So uh, it looks like this. <laughs> All right, um, so that's just the uh, same riff, basically played eight times instead of four. Um, and let's go through the fills. So the first fill is the same as the first fill in all the verses. And then the, to the second fill. I'm oh, sorry. And that's just the eighth fret there on the um, B string. I'll bar dip on that. Then the third fill is this. So that's a quick little pull off from three to zero on the A. And then you're gonna do a trill between zero and two on the G string. All right, and then the fourth time through has the normal ending. And then we get through the, just do the whole verse riff again. This fifth fill here is, which is just a pull off from uh, three to zero here on the A, over to the uh, second fret there on the G. Just hit that note. And um, like sort of pinch harmonics on these things and stuff too. Um, so just on that G there, second fret. Yeah. And then. Then uh, the sixth fill in that last verse is just the open A string. A little bar dip on it, and then the riff again for the seventh time. And after the seventh time, it's a little bar dive on the open G this time. And then the same ending. And then we get to this outro section, which is, he kind of holds like an A chord. You see Bob basically just keep going on that, that note. And then you kind of play those double stops at the eighth fret there on the B and the high E. And then he'll see him up. But from there, it's just kind of, it's not really any kind of a solo or anything. It's just kind of, just kind of just messing it's just kind of making random noise, and it's like multiple guitars going there. So I'm not really going to cover that. It's just kind of like a outro that they're kind of, uh, it's not the main part of the song. There's really nothing to teach there. It's just kind of a bunch of, you know, atmospheric sounds and stuff. So, but it's based around mostly just an A. And um, that's about all we'll cover for that section. There's really nothing really to cover. But it's got some fun riffs in it. And like I said, Randy's the king of the guitar fill. He would... Especially live, he would just throw so much cool stuff all over the, the the riffs. So he was a busy player, but he was he just really brought a lot of excitement to the music. So it was very fun to listen to. All right, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for GuitarLessons365.com.